All right, so in this problem, I have four to the power of x is equal to eight. So obviously here, I wanna find the value of x. So for my solution, first start by rewriting my problem. So I have four to the power of x is equal to eight. Now four here, this is the same thing as two squared. So I'm gonna rewrite this as two squared to the power of x. I, all I did was replace four with two squared. And now eight, this is the same thing as two to the power of three. So I'm gonna replace eight with two to the power of three. So I have two squared to the power of x is equal to two to the power of three. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 2 to the power of 2 to the power of x, that's going to equal 2 to the power of 2 times x, which is simply 2 to the power of 2x. And now this is equal to 2 to the power of 3. And now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m, is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n. Meaning in this case, 2x is equal to m and 3 is n. So I have 2x is equal to 3. And this is a simple equation. All I have to do is divide both sides by 2. So then these two cancel out and I get x is equal to 3 over 2. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of x plus one is equal to x. So to solve this, I'm gonna start by subtracting x on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I'm left with x to the power of x plus one minus x is equal to zero. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So x to the power of x plus one, this is gonna be equal to x to the power of x times x to the power of one. Now I have this minus x is equal to zero. Now if I factor out x, I get x times x to the power of x minus one is equal to zero. So now this gives me two equations. I have x is equal to zero, and I have x to the power of x minus one is equal to zero. So x equals zero, this is already a solution. Now for x to the power of x minus one equals zero, I'm gonna add one on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I get x to the power of x is equal to one. Now, because x has to be the same number, we obviously know that, well, what number to the power of self is equal to one? That's gonna be one, right? Because one to the power of one is equal to self. So x is equal to one. And there's no, actually, there's no other number that when you take the power of itself is going to equal 1. S meaning x equals 1 is the only solution to this equation. So now to check. The original equation was x to the power of x plus 1 is equal to x. So x to the power of x plus 1 is equal to x. And our first solution was 0. So if I plug in zero, I get zero to the power of zero plus one is equal to zero. Now zero plus one is one, so I have zero power to the power of one equals zero, and zero to the power of any number is itself, so I get zero equals zero. Now to check for one, I get one to the power of one plus one is equal to one. One plus one is two, so I get one to the power of two is equal to one, and one to the power of any number itself, so one equals one.
All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of x is equal to 100. So I'm going to first start by taking the natural log, or ln, on both sides. So I have ln x to the power of x is equal to ln 100. Now, if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, I can move this x1 and b to the front. So this can equal b times ln a. So for ln x to the power of x, I can move x to the front, and I'm going to get x times ln x is equal to ln 100. Now ln 100, that's the same thing as ln of 10 squared. So I get x times ln x is equal to ln 10 squared. And if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, again, I can move 2 to the front. So I get x times ln x is equal to 2 times ln 10. Now, there's something called the W Lambert function. And if I take the W Lambert function of something in the form e to the power of, sorry, a times e to the power of a, this is going to equal a. So this is basically what the W Lambert function is. So if there's something in the form a to the power, a times e to the power of a, that's going to equal a. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to rewrite x here as e to the power of ln of x because e, the e and ln cancel out and this results in simply x. So I'm just going to rewrite x as e to the power of ln of x and I have this times ln x is equal to 2 times ln 10. And now this is in the form a times e to the power of a. So now if I take the w Lambert function on both sides, This results in ln x equaling w of 2 times ln 10. And now if I take e to the power of both sides, I get e to the power of ln x is equal to e to the power of w of 2 ln 10. And e to the power of ln x, that's going to equal x. So I get x is equal to e to the power of w of 2 times ln 10. And this is equal to 3.597285, which rounds up to 3.597. So this is my answer to this problem. All right, so in this video, I'm solving the equation x to the power of 3 is equal to 3 to the power of 3. So to solve this, I'm going to first start by subtracting 3 to the power of 3 on both sides. So now I get x to the power of 3 minus 3 to the power of 3 is equal to 0. Now from here, if I have something in the form a to the power of 3 minus b to the power of 3, this is equal to a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. So this turns into x minus 3 times x squared plus 3x plus 9 is equal to 0. So now from here, I get two equations. I get x minus 3 equals 0, and x squared plus 3x plus 9 is equal to 0. So obviously, for x minus 3 equals 0, x is equal to 3. So this is one solution. And now for x squared plus 3x plus 9 equals 0, I can use the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So this turns into negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 3 squared, which is 9, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 9, all over 2a, so 2 times 1. And this turns into negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 36 over 2, which is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 27 over 2, which is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 27 times the square root of negative 1 over 2. Now, 27 is the same thing as 9 times 3. And the square root of 9 is 3, so I get x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus 3 root 3. And the square root of negative 1 is actually equal to the imagined number i. So these are two more solutions to this equation.